And then the audio file comes over here to Apple. Oh, hey, all right. So in this video, we are gonna do everything with podcast hosting. What a podcast host is, why you need one, what they're gonna do for you, and how to get into all these directories. I'm super excited about this video. Let's go. All right, so when I started writing this script, I realized I was using a lot of technical terms. You're talking about like RSS feeds and all these directories, and there's just a lot of jargon around podcast hosting. So I wanted to take it back to things when they're a little bit simpler, when we were in grade school or maybe kindergarten, and we might have used some popsicle sticks like this uh, to explain these more difficult concepts. And this will help make things concrete. It's not just a gimmick. Um, it's going to make it stick a little bit easier and help you understand. Uh, so the first question we've got to get is, what is a podcast host and how does it work? So every great podcast starts with a podcaster. This is Polly Podcaster. And one day she had a great idea, much like you might have had a great idea to start a podcast. And maybe she watched some of our other videos on what equipment you need to get set up. So she buys a mic, uh, pulls out her laptop, and actually starts recording her first few episodes. And once those are edited and ready to go, uh, she's got a couple podcast episodes on her computer. This whole video is about the gap between getting to these files and people actually listening to those podcast episodes. There's a misconception that all you need to do is upload these files. This is the upload process uh, to Apple Podcasts or iTunes. And that is a misconception. It's not what you're gonna do. Apple Podcasts and Spotify, they don't host your audio files. Instead, you'll upload to a podcast host like Buzzsprout. Um, and these files will actually go over to Buzzsprout and Buzzsprout will create something called an RSS feed. Um, an RSS feed is basically just a really simplified web page, but it's one page that has all the information about your podcast. It's got a link to uh, the, the artwork for your podcast. It's got your title, your description. It's got links to every one of these files that are on your podcast host. And so what's so powerful about having everything together in one page, in one format, is that Apple knows how to read it. And Google Podcasts knows how to read it. And Spotify knows how to get access to all these files. And all the apps on your phone, they all work with it too. That we have one centralized place that everything can go to look to, to figure out whenever there's a new episode, to learn when you maybe made an update to the title. In the common tongue, it says one ring to rule them all. So what is a podcast host? A podcast host is the place your podcast lives. It's this one centralized place. And it works by creating a single web page called the RSS feed that actually will send these files when requested over to people's phones so they can listen to your brand new podcast. So let's talk a bit more about this section, the podcast directories. So what role are the podcast directories actually playing in the grand scheme of things? What they're doing is they're making it easy for people to find you. When you've got a listener uh, looking around, they could be someone who searches things on Google and they find an episode, or maybe it's someone who listens on Spotify to music and maybe they run across your show, or it could be like the majority of podcast listeners and they use Apple Podcasts uh, to find new content. You want your podcast to be in all these directories so that you have the best opportunity to get out to the world. And the way you do that is by doing a one-time submission process. And we're taking this RSS feed, the single web page with all the information about your podcast, and we're giving that link to Apple. And Apple then, on Apple Podcasts, will do a real human uh, check of your podcast. It can actually take up to two weeks because they have a real person 
sit down, make sure it's not spam, not explicit, it hasn't been labeled as such. They go through that whole process to make sure everything's good and then they add it to the directory. Google Podcasts and Spotify are a little faster because they don't do that human curation element. After you've been approved, you don't ever have to submit to these directories again. All the other episodes will go there automatically because Apple Podcasts starts checking every day to see if there's a new episode. So let's say Polly updates on Tuesday and on Sunday, Apple checks. Oh, it's got the one episode on Monday. There's one episode and then she uploads her new file and then Apple will come over and say, whoa, there's two files now. I'm gonna go ahead and update the listing so that anybody who learns about this podcast now can see the most recent podcast episode. Now it can be disconcerting if you upload your podcast at midnight and you don't see it show up inside of Apple Podcasts until 3 p.m. that day. Well, the reason that happens is because maybe Apple didn't come and check until 3 p.m. that day. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It's actually pretty common for an episode to not show up uh, for more than 12 hours. The great news and why you don't really have to get concerned is that all of your listeners are refreshing their apps pretty regularly. And the apps check more often than the directories. And the app will just go and check whenever they refresh it and go, oh, there's a new episode, let's download that. And they download it onto all of your listeners' phones so they can listen to it. Um, <laughs> hopefully they don't brought their phone so they can listen to it at their convenience. There's a lot of other directories out there there's uh, some called Deezer and Stitcher and iHeartRadio and TuneIn and Google Play Music. There's a lot. But the three that really matter that actually make up about 99% of all podcast listeners are Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google. So I say when you're starting a podcast, don't think about all the other directories yet. We'll get in those down the line. In the beginning, we're gonna submit probably in this order, to Apple Podcast, Spotify, then Google Podcast. And if you're on a podcast host like Buzzsprout, we're gonna make this super easy for you to do. You're just gonna go onto a page called Podcast Directories and just start clicking to do that submission process. All right, so now you're probably wondering, how much does podcast hosting cost and what should I expect to pay for it? Depending on which podcast host you pick, you can expect to pay between 10 to $25 a month to host your podcast. Uh, Buzzsprout comes in at about $12 and that's gonna give you access to all of the features we're gonna talk about in the next section, including things like detailed analytics, embed players for your website, and even share tools so that you can get your podcast promoted on social media. One of the things that makes us different and was really important to us when we were building Buzzsprout is that we start everybody on a free plan because we really didn't want people to put in a credit card and start paying months before they ever launched their podcast because we know sometimes it can take a little bit longer than you thought. So start on a free plan, get a couple of these podcast episodes under your belt and once those are out in the world and you know this podcasting thing is for you, then you can upgrade to uh, that $12 plan. And as always, cost is only one variable. We also need to make sure you're getting a host that has all the features that you need to make your show successful. Um, so we're gonna talk about how you pick a podcast host. So how do you pick a podcast host? Well, I'm gonna give you five things that I think are critical for you to make sure a host has before you sign up because you don't wanna sign up, start uploading episodes and figure out that you need to move somewhere else. Number one is ease of use. You've already seen how complicated some of this stuff can get. So make sure you find a host that is really intuitive for you to use. You want someone who's gonna take some of this complexity off of the table so that you can focus on just creating a great podcast. After that, you want to be able to start with a website if you, without building one yourself. So look for a host that lets you build a website with them 
and allows you to put it on your own domain. Remember when we had Polly the podcaster, she wants it to be on pollyspodcast.com. She doesn't want it to be on somebody else's website. So make sure you get it on your own domain. Number three is it's tough to grow a podcast. So you want some tools so you can share like a little trailer or a teaser for people to learn about your podcast on social media. So look for tools to help you grow. We've already talked, number four, about the podcast directories and how critical this is for your podcast. So make sure your host makes it easy for you to get into all these directories. And last, but certainly not least, is you need some data about your podcast and you shouldn't have to pay more for you to get that data. So let's look for detailed analytics. You wanna be able to answer questions like, is my podcast growing over time? Are my episodes performing better than they used to? Where are my listeners located in the world? And what apps are people using to download my episodes? All of those are going to be important for you to understand as you make more changes about your podcast. Now, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you that these are all things that are important to us at Buzzsprout. Um, we've been building a podcast host for over 11 years. And each one of those are things that we think are important for you to be successful. And that's why we've built them into Buzzsprout. And all of them are available on that $12 plan because we don't think it should cost a ton of money for you to be able to produce a professional level podcast. <laughs> All right, so now you know everything you need to know about podcast hosting. We talk, took a podcast from an idea in Polly Podcaster's mind. She recorded it onto our laptop, edited it into some files that she uploaded to her podcast host. Her host created this RSS feed. That's the backbone of your podcast, the single web page that has all the information and all the links for your podcast. We talked about how all the directories, how they don't host anything, but instead are listings for your podcast so that people can find your show and how they check once a day to see if there have been any updates. We also talked about how your friends can, friends, their future friends, current listeners, um, whenever they refresh on their phone, that they actually go and download the episode directly from your podcast host. I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any other questions, we will answer every single one of them in the comments below. So let us know what was confusing, what we could have elaborated on. We'd love to help um, answer all of your questions. If you found this video valuable and you want to see more content <laughs> like it, go ahead and like the video, subscribe. We put out content like this all the time. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we're falling apart. Video over. Keep podcasting. <laughs>